In the past, we have some plan over here, and then we close it out together with some close loop tensor function. Maybe it's um, if you have to close it, what what do we have? If I have a p over one plus p, for example, what I have is um s plus two, um s plus three, s plus one. All right, and then I'll just simply um merge them all together, and then I so this is this this one is over here is our closed loop um plan. All right, this is the open loop plan. All right, after which we plot this um characteristic integration for your loop locus if you still remember. So you just plot all the poles and uh, zeros all over here, and then we see how the poles and zeros move if you still remember. This position of the poles and zeros at certain frequency will will go to certain. If it goes to the, the this right half plane, if you have any zeros or poles when your closed loop is over here, this means you're unstable if you still remember. Therefore, we are talking only about the plan. All right, the plan is something that you cannot change because you already buy hundred thousand of dollars, and then you say that you want to change your cell. Right. Therefore, you want a certain controller to control this plan. Therefore, we require a certain controller such that when you multiply in with your plan, you ensure that your poles and zeros over here will not be over here. It will be somewhere safe. Then you are considered safe. And therefore, we are required to actually unblock your poles. Alright, so we want to shift your poles from this side all the way back to the some stable sites, maybe here, maybe here, whatsoever. As long as it's within here, when you close loop, it should be safe. Alright, so we are somewhat talking about pole placement. You are gonna place your poles to a somewhere safer site. Alright, and how do we do this? So let's introduce you the term first. Alright, but just to highly explicitly define to you is that your plan is already given the transfer function. Is that we want to design a controller, a, a transfer function for this controller such that it corresponds well with or, or collaborate well with your plan such that everything is safe. Alright, the purpose of it is to design your controller. But however, we don't know how to design because there's no parameters. And therefore, we're going to use the parameters of the plan and somewhat deal with the controller itself. So that's why I want to define certain stuff, at least you know what I mean later on. And how do we design a controller later on? All right, and therefore, um, the controller itself has a certain GS and over HS, meaning something like um, maybe S plus 2 over S plus 3, S plus 4, whatsoever. All right, same thing. The, the, the plan itself has a certain BS over AS. So far, so good. For your G and your B, your which is your zeros, if you just take a look, your constants over here, there is this G and this G over here are just stating that it's just some constants. Don't don't be scared by all this. All right, it's just simply stating that, for example, this is um two S plus S plus zero. That's all or five. All right, so it's just um the first order. For example, this is. 2n square, sorry, 2n square, not yum, 2s cube, alright, so n is equals to 3, so plus 2s, maybe 4s square now, alright, so when this is n minus 1 plus maybe 8s, so it is n minus 2 and so on, until um, plus 5, which is when n is equals to 0, and therefore, s to the power of 0 is 1 so therefore it's just this g, this g not over here so this g1 g2 all, all of this is just si simply a constant some numbers only all right but what i want to convey is that for a g and a b for the zeros of your plan and your control uh, for your plan and your controller over here their constants for their highest order over here can uh, exist exist all right so as you can see the for here and here the highest order exists, alright? There is coefficient, meaning this thing and this thing is a coefficient of your s, alright, as you can see over here. Alright, there is coefficient. But you have to just check it out for h and a, maybe I should use a different color, h, s and a, s, which is the denominator or your poles. There is only one times this s, there is no coefficient at all, it's just simply s, as you can see. So there's the difference of it, alright, so for the G and the B is just simply some polynomial. As for H and A, which have their highest order, because this is their highest order already, the rest are minus 1, minus 1, right, this is the N. 
Alright, and therefore, for the highest order, their coefficient always must be 1. Alright, with such of the name, or such of the trend, we call this, this tool of this polynomial system, we call it the monic polynomial system. Alright, so therefore we introduce the monic. Next thing, next thing next is that, normally in the previous parts of all our videos, we're talking about the controller and the plants. We say that the CP is equal to the loop gain, and then um, CP over 1 plus CP is equal to your loop gain, and things like that. Alright, so let's take a look what are the, the little trends, similarity between them, so like we can plan something of the controller. So therefore, for the sensitivity function, is 1 over 1 plus CP. Alright, if you were to close loop, it will become like this. Alright, meaning uh, if you were to, actually not close loop, but much jump, if you were to sub in uh, G and H, B and um, A as your, as your C and your P. Is it? C is G, G, H, right? Yeah, C is G, H. So, when you sub in C and P as your G, H, and then you sub in over here and you, re you rearrange, you have this thing over here. Alright, same thing for your for your complementary sensitivity function. Same thing for your control sensitivity function. Alright, you have all this over here. Alright, what we can see is the similar trend is that your denominator over here are all the same. A not H plus B not G, A not H plus blah blah blah. Alright, therefore these are all your closed loop poles. Your closed loop poles. And then we can plot your poles over the root locus. Alright, and then see whether it is safe or not. So this characteristic equation is something that we often use, right? The closed loop pose. Closed loop pose normally we will plot. If it's safe, then it's safe. If it's not safe, then see out. Alright? And therefore you have to really know the closed loop pose. Alright? And therefore we are taking this AOH. Alright? This A not H plus B not G equals to 0. Instead of calling this characteristic equation for all the time that we call this, instead of calling that name, we call this something else. Something very nice name. And we call this the polynomial diophantine fin equation. <laughs> Alright, so this is your, your characteristic equation in the name of the diophantine equation, where it's equals to zero. Where ACL is your A closed loop, that's all. Alright, simply let's say that it's some um, arbitrary, cho arbitrary choice of A when it's closed loop. So, so it's just the meaning of it. Alright. Where it's equals to zero still, uh, alright. Therefore, I haven't tell you um, how to choose a controller based on your plan. So therefore, let's start based on your plan, alright? Because I just want to introduce you the term ACL. Where well, ACL is your diophantine diophantine equation, something like that, alright. So how do we start? To start, you need to know your plan's transfer function. For example, s plus one over s square plus s plus three. Alright, so this is your plan transfer function. And then you're going to identify the highest order of this, of your plan. Alright, from here, the highest order is 1. Alright, from here, you can see that the highest order is s squared plus times s is s cubed, right? So therefore, it's 3, the highest order. Alright, therefore, n is equals to 3. Then you sub this n over to the side. So if it's a for proper system, meaning it's just okay, okay only, Alright, you proper sweet sweet nice already. So you just put in as three, three minus one is equal to two. Alright. So this this order two can say tells you that your degree of your G and your degree of your H can be order of two and must be order of two. And therefore G and H is something like S square over uh, maybe S S plus one. So this is order of two, this is also order of two. Alright, as long as order of two can already, or maybe s plus one, s, and then um, s square. Alright, you can also do this. Also order of two, order of two. Okay, so therefore you can choose any transfer function already. Sweet, sweet, right? But you cannot anyhow hum down. You cannot say that s s plus one s square like that. You cannot anyhow hum down. You need some arbitrary equation. You need a polynomial to describe, and therefore this polynomial comes in. Alright. So therefore, this G and H come in, and what, what can we do about it? Is that, um, you can say that it's for G, if it's a second order, because we, we know that it's second order now, we want it to be second, de second degree. Alright, so therefore it's some G uh, S square plus G S plus G. Then this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. Alright, 
so normally they name this constant name this can be two can be three can be four whatever but you just they just named it this this g2 and g1 and g0 as as some constants value divided by your h Alright, your h is also the same degree so it's simply um but think not that your h all right is a monic so this constant is one over here all right because we know that monic the, the highest degree of it um, is one so therefore it's just simply s square plus h1s plus h2 okay so far so good and this is your, your general equation for your g and h all right so first step you need to identify your plan all right the transfer function is this second step is to identify its highest order which is 3 and n is equals to 3 the next step is to sub in all right you have m minus 1 is equals to 2 all right and then next once you know this is this is degree of 2 for g and h which is your controller you know that your controller's polynomial will be something like this all right because of the number of order that we want all right and next five right now you're going to sub in all right you know that a naught is one your a naught is where's my a naught this this dude over here so you just sub it in all right and then your h is what your h is this whole chunk over here so i'll just simply sub it in also all right and then plus b naught g all right b naught is s plus one all right so i'll just simply sub in as s plus one and g is your this dude, this this dude over here so simply sub it in also you can double check all right you sub in your n as three because we have found that it's three so therefore two times three is six six minus one is equals to five so you have to ensure that your highest order is five for your acl then let's check s square times s is three order times s square so the whole thing for this chunk over here is s to the power of five so it should be fine all right next i check for here this is only first order multiply by the second order so this whole thing is just a third order so it's lesser than five should be fine all right as long as one of it is five can really in this case this one all right and then you do some expansion all right i'm not going to do the expansion for you so you do some expansion really we have some constants regarding um your your g2 your g1 and your g0 all right and your h your h and your h2 okay so this is the equation for acl and in order to find your h1, h2 and these things over here, you require another closed loop transfer function. Why you require another closed loop transfer function. So if you have another closed loop transfer function that represents this one, you may have you may found out that your h1 your equals to maybe 5, your h2 is equals to 2, your g1, your g2 is equals to um, maybe g maybe 6, your g1 is equals to 5 and g g naught is equals to maybe 10 all right you can just simply sub back in into your your transfer function because we want to know what our control transfer function is so h1 is this one right so which is 5 so you can simply as write as so h1 you write as 5 so h2 is what h2 is 2 so you just simply write all of this in so at the end of the day you simply fill it up instead of g2 and g1 you have some values already so uh, if I fill it up, my transfer function, my control is this already. So it's something like 6s square, like this. So this is the transfer function of your controller. So if you sub in your this controller, multiply with your plant's con um, transfer function, all right, and in your closed loop, you should have, you should be stable. And this is the criteria for us for just a normal proper system, all right. So this is the criteria that you set. As you can see by the steps, my uh, step one is to determine your whatever and then determine your n, you sub in your n. So this n are all the criteria for a proper system. For a three proper, the, the system isn't 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 that linear anymore. As you can see, um, dg is equals to m minus one, dh is equals to n. Alright, so h is an order higher than your g. Comparatively, for here is g and h are equals order, which is m minus one. Alright, same as the ACL, ACL is two n. For for ACL for proper is 2n minus 1 for 3 proper is 2n. So these are the conditions that you need to really take note of and memorize inside your head. But generally the concept is here. You just simply start here and start there and then you eventually get there. But the blur part is that you you may find it weird is that why I solved this one already, alright? And then I why do I need another ACL equation to compare and eventually get H1 and H2, right? So because 
the purpose is to get your H one and H two lah, alright. So that's why we we want it. We want to get a a full transfer function over here. So in initially it was like G G over here and G over here, G one, G not and G two, right? So now we sub in both all of them as some numbers already. So therefore, if you still find it unclear, in the next video we'll talk about more on um, the whole how we do this thing, all right? And the little cheat codes that we may share. Alright, and therefore I hope that this this gives you a good summary of um of how do we approach the pole placement and, and introduction to all these things. See you in the next video.